watching Henry AI Labs. This video is going to explain the neuroevolution of augmenting topologies, the neat algorithm laying the groundwork for neuroevolutionary algorithms. This video is the first in line of the September theme for Henry AI Labs deep learning and artificial intelligence videos focusing on AutoML, neural architecture search, and hyperparameter op optimization with a focus on neuroevolution. So please subscribe to Henry AI Labs if you're interested in these topics. Neuroevolution is the idea of the artificial evolution of neural networks using genetic algorithms. It's a really cool idea thinking about combining the biological uh, evolutionary algorithms and simulating them to design neural networks. This has shown great promise in complex reinforcement learning tasks like control problems like the uh, cart pull balancing problem and miscellaneous other things dating back from 1993. The neat foundational algorithm for this kind of research and evolving not just the weights as an alternative to stochastic gradient descent, but also using, neuro, uh, using evolution to search for the architectures of neural networks was published in 2001. So the motivations for neuroevolution. This has been really successful in reinforcement learning control tasks like pull balancing or game playing. In addition, things like AutoML, hyperparameter optimization, neural architecture search contain these kinds of uh, metaparameters in which we're trying to figure out ways in which we can design neural networks. Reinforcement learning it, it has some promise, but it's generally been found to be slow. Uh, differentiable search, things like darts, have been pretty successful. But neuroevolution is a very promising technique that we will explore further in this September theme, starting with the foundational paper of the NEAT algorithm. So prior research to evolving neural networks to the NEAT algorithm, published in 2001, they mostly focused on evolving just the weights rather than the architecture as well. So the topology or the architecture of the network would be chosen before the evolutionary algorithm would begin. And then the weight space would be explored by a crossover of network weights and mutation of a single network's weights. So you can think about evolutionary optimization compared to backpropagation. Backpropagation is where you take the partial derivative with respect to every parameter of the neural network, whereas evolutionary optimization doesn't bother with the uh, partial derivatives with respect to the parameters, but rather it just mutates them and uses some sort of fitness function, and usually uh, crossover as well. Generally, evolutionary algorithms can be viewed in this framework. They start with some form of initialization of the population, and then these uh, population members are evaluated. There might be some form of crossover. This can be omitted, and then they would be mutated. And this cycle would repeat for a given amount of iterations. So the key questions that the NEAT algorithm looks to answer for its time is, is there a genetic representation that allows different topologies to cross over in a meaningful way? Meaning that, how do you encode neural network topologies such that you can have crossover? So for example, if you have a binary encoding or a graph encoding of neural network architectures, it isn't so obvious how you would uh, cross over and mutate uh, different members of the population. The second question is, how can topological innovation that needs a few generations to be optimized be protected so that it does not disappear from the population prematurely? Now what this means is that in neural network architectures, a bigger model will require more time to optimize. So if the uh, population member is mutated such that it becomes more complex and it has random weights, odds are that network is not going to perform as well. So what you need to do in the neuroevolution algorithm is to protect these uh, type of innovations, these new uh, structures and developing complexity in the neural network such that they aren't penalized too much for the additional complexity right away because you do want your neural network in the end to be as small as possible. So you have to develop some kind of speciation technique to ensure that the neural networks have enough time to potentially uh, benefit from adding complexity. And then the third question is, how can topologies be minimized throughout evolution without the need for a specially contrived fitness function that measures complexity? So this idea is basically, how can you uh, reward networks for being as simple as possible uh, without having some function because it's hard to design such a function that doesn't restrict and limit the capacity of the evolution too much. Some of the key ideas of the NEAT algorithm are the genetic encoding, the way that they encode the neural networks uh, such that they have a phenotype and a genotype, where the genotype is the underlying, enc underlying encoding of the neural network that will be uh, used in crossover and mutation, and then the phenotype is the resulting neural network which is used in evaluation. The next key idea is the historical marking uh, technique that allows for crossover between neural network architectures and then the speciation technique that allows for, uh, you know, adding complexity to be rewarded later on. So sort of like how uh, biological niches are formed, the speciation uh, add-on to the NEAT framework will allow neural network topologies to 
niche themselves and then only compete within their niche. And then this is also done in this next idea, the explicit fitness sharing, which is where you only compete within your own species. Well, not only within your own species, but generally you're penalized based on your own species rather than competing with the whole population. And then the final idea is this minimal structure of initialization. Rather than starting with a uh, random initialization, similar to nature, you start with the bare minimum neural network and then you go up from there. This is the technique used in the NEAT algorithm to encode neural network architectures. So each network architecture has a genotype and then the resulting phenotype. So the way the genotype is composed, it has a node gene set and a connection gene set. So the known gene set just contains the input nodes, the number of hidden nodes, and then the output. So this is used as the reference when the connection nodes uh, find these in and out uh, parameters to construct the connections between nodes in the neural network. So each of the connection genes contain the in value, out value, uh, the weight, and then whether it's enabled or disabled, meaning that, you know, just if it's active or not, and then an innovation number, which we'll discuss further. Which, and this is the innovation number is the technique for how they're going to do crossover in the NEAT algorithm. So NEAT mutations and the encoding space. This is the way in which the NEAT algorithm mutates neural architectures in, you know, in an evolutionary algorithm. This is like the key component. This is the, really like the, you know, like the equivalent of backpropagation is mutation in, uh, in uh, evolutionary algorithms. So the way that this works is the network can either add a connection or add a node. So if it adds a connection, it's basically just uh, connecting nodes that already exist in the network that don't have a connection already. So you see that when it adds a connection from three to four, it is appended to the end of the genotype and it's given this uh, innovation number. So the innovation numbers are maintained through like a global table to maintain that they have this uh, consistency in the ordering. So this somewhat limits the uh, synchronous nature of it, although uh, like the asynchronous capability of evolutionary algorithms, which one of the best things about using evol evolutionary algorithms is that it's so easy to parallelize it because you're just mutating and then, you know, you have things like DeepMind's population-based search, which just uh, grabs two out of the population and evaluates them to further promote asynchronous uh, evolution. But this just requires a global table, so you could just read right to it and still have an asynchronous kind of procedure. But anyways, back to this. So another mutation it has is to add a node. So in this example, it's gonna add this new node six. So the way that this works is the connection from three to five is disabled. Remember the disable flag from the uh, connection genotype would be uh, now disabled for the previous connection from three to five. So the connection from three to six is appended to the back of the genotype as is the connection from six to five. So crossover in network topologies is a challenging problem because of competing conventions, meaning that there are many different ways to encode the same function in neural networks. So in this case, both of these networks uh, compute the same fun combination of A, B, and C, even though they're ordered differently. And their genotypes might be represented this way. And when you cross over, you could result in ABA or CBC, you know, missing information from the uh, parent networks. So the solution of this is to use the historical markings to do sort of an alignment similar to how biological uh, crossover has the alignment of genes that share the same trait, like the alleles of genes. So what this does is when parent one and parent two are selected for crossover, they're first lined up based on the uh, historical traits that they share. So see how they both share one and two, but not three, and then four and six, but not these other ones. So the way that the ones that aren't included work is the parent that performed better is, is uh, you keep the historical markings from them. So in this case, parent two has a better performance according to the fitness evaluation function. So you keep three, seven, and eight, and discard five. This is the equation that they use to protect innovation with speciation in the NEAT algorithm. So if you remember back to the original key questions addressed in the NEAT algorithm, they want to have a way to speciate different neural network topologies so that they can only compete with other networks of a similar structure and then therefore networks that are in the process of evolving more complex structure can avoid being penalized for this complex structure and eventually optimize their weights for better performance. So this delta function is based on the number of excess genes, number of disjoint genes, and the average weight difference of matching genes between two different samples of the population. So if this delta exceeds a certain threshold, delta sub t, 
it will be grouped into a new it will be grouped into that species. So the way that uh, fitness computation works with speciation is the fitness of a member of the population is penalized with this value being zero or one based on this delta distance parameter. So basically, the fitness of a model is uh, penalized based on the size of its species. So if a function has a high number, like say there's 10 other members of this species, it's going to be divided by 10, whereas if there's only two, it's going to be divided by two. So obviously, the less members of the species, the better the fitness function. So another key uh, innovation in the NEAT paper is the idea of minimal in initialization. So the, it's a, in some evolutionary algorithms, they are randomly initialized, which means that a network could initially have a massive amount of complexity in its structure, but we want networks to be as simple as possible. And analogous with nature, we want it to start from the, you know, start from the bare basics, but nothing. The effectiveness of the NEAT algorithm is initially tested with the XOR Boolean logic problem. This is frequently used to test neural networks because it requires learning the nonlinearity to separate with the XOR logic. So this diagram just shows the initial population sample and then the learned structure when it solves the XOR problem. Then NEAT graduates to the cart pole balancing problem. This is where it uh, learns to apply a force every like 0.02 seconds, such as to keep this uh, pole balanced above the cart from like, avoid it from falling all the way over. So these are the comparisons with the NEAT algorithm and other algorithms of its time, measured based on how many evaluations it takes until it can successfully uh, balance the pole on different problems. This is the same uh, comparison, but with a harder pole balancing problem where there's like two poles and other miscellaneous things that make balancing the pole a harder control problem. So this is an ablation study on the different techniques pr uh, proposed, like things like using fixed topologies. Uh, this has the most amount of evaluations and still a high failure rate on the pole balancing, uh, not using speciation, using uh, starting from initially random population members actually has a very surprisingly high evaluations required, and then not using crossover, and then all of this compared to all of the innovations proposed in the NEAT algorithm. So you see how all of the different techniques like the uh, historical marking allowing for crossover, the speciation, the mutation, and the initialization all sort of interact with each other in the context of the evolutionary algorithm. So another interesting thing to think about with uh, hyperparameter optimization, neuroevolution, and all these techniques is, the, is that even the hyperparameter optimization technique NEAT has hyperparameters of itself. It has these fitness sharing parameters, the population size, and the mutation sampling distribution. So an interesting thing to investigate could be, is it useful to abstract another layer up to have an evolutionary algorithm optimizing an evolutionary algorithm optimizing a neural network. And then another idea is the context of evolving weights only, developing to NEAT that evolves the weights and the topology, and then recently we've seen weight agnostic neural networks which don't even uh, bother with the weights at all, they just focus on the topology. And weight agnostic neural networks are so surprisingly successful that they can uh, make net neural networks work even when every single parameter in the network is the same. Thanks for watching this video on the neuroevolution of augmenting topologies, the NEAT algorithm. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs if you are interested in deep learning and artificial intelligence, and specifically in September, focusing on AutoML, neural architecture search, hyperparameter optimization, with a special emphasis on neuroevolutionary algorithms. Thanks for watching.